Today, we're gonna to talk about how to use component properties to create a pseudo slot component. In the example I have here, I have some components that I pre-made that will go into my card design. I've got an image with some text on it. I've got a title, subtitle, just some text, a few button options and a divider. And these are the elements that can be used inside of my card design. So these are all already components and I've got one over here that you can barely see. And this is my pseudo element or my slot. This is an empty slot, essentially. It is tiny, tiny, tiny. Its height is only 0.01 pixels. And I'm going to use this empty slot inside of my card and then I can replace it with a different components to build the design that I want. Let's do that together. I'm going to tap on F to just create a frame and then I'm going to drop one of these empty slots inside of it. So command C, command V and I have an instance of it there. I'm going to click on my frame and shift A to add an auto layout. So I can't see this kind of element inside of it but I know that it's there. I want to give my card 10 pixel padding on the sides and maybe 20 pixels padding on the top and on the bottom. And I want my vertical spacing to be five between the different elements. Even though this card is going to be a component, I know that I will still be able to change and control the auto layout properties. So five is fine for now, but I know that anyone using it will be able to change the spacing if necessary. I'm going to select my empty slot and just duplicate it five more times. So these five empty slots will be able to be replaced with the components that I built previously. All my slots are called 00 empty slot right now and I wanna rename them so it's easier for me to understand which slot I'm selecting. If I click on the frame and then enter, I'll select all of the children within, command R for batch renaming and just name them slot and then click on number up. I will remove one of those ends to create a single digit number and rename. And now they are renamed according to their kind of sequential number. Next thing is I want to create this into a component so it can be reusable. So I'll rename this card and make it into a component. Now that it's a component, I wanna drag an instance of it. So I'm just gonna duplicate a component. Here I have an instance of the card. Here is the main component. So we can see the changes happening. If we want, we can stop right now. If I look at this instance over here, I have these slots inside. If I double tap, I can kind of get to them or just select them from the layers panel. And then just using the component swap over here, I can just change them to whatever component I want. But using component properties makes it a bit easier because you don't have to do that double click or find that slot in the layers panel. You can just do it from the kind of top level of the card. So let's do that. In my main component, I'm going to select my first slot, so slot number one. And then in the design panel, I'll have this section here with this component properties button to create an instance swap property. If I click on that and say slot number one, I'll just remove this for now. We'll explain the preferred values later and create that property. If I go into my instance over here, you can see that on the top level, I'm just selecting the card. You can see that in the layers panel as well. On the design panel, I now have the ability to swap whatever instance I'm using in slot number one from this top level. I'm going to go ahead and put instance swap properties on all of my slots. Now you can see that I have an instance swap component property on every single one of my slots and I can just change them from the top level. So I can go in here, select a title, then a divider, then maybe an image, some text and a button. And as simple as that, I've created this card from all of my options. Remember those preferred values that we saw earlier? That's another benefit for component properties. For example, let's say that in this top slot, in slot number one, I want to limit my user so they're only able to select a title or an image because the top slot can't be anything else. What I can do if I go back into my main component and I just edit this instance swap property over here, I can add a preferred value. And I can say that in this top space, the user can only select an image or a title. Now, if I jump back into my instance, and I go to the drop down for slot number one, I can only see those two components and I see that they're under preferred. If I do want to override that, I can go in here, local components and then find my elements, but it's a lot harder. So when I just click on it and go into here, I will only see those preferred values. That's another huge benefit of component properties, the ability to just narrow it down. If we feel more comfortable changing the instance from the actual instance itself, we can still do that. So if I double click over here into this text into slot number four, I can just change it from here from text to two buttons, for example. If I select my card, you'll see that that carries through. So it now knows that I changed slot number four to the two buttons component. So you can do it from kind of within the instance or you can do it from the top level from the card itself. 
we've created a card that has five slots inside of it. But what if someone only wants to use three slots and they don't want to use the rest? The way to remove a slot is either you can double click it and then just delete it. So click on delete. And because this is a component, we know that if we look in the layers panel, it's only hidden because you can't actually delete anything inside of a component. Another way to do this is we can use the Boolean component properties. So if I go into my main component, I'm just going to do this for slot number one to show that as an example. If I select slot number one and here next to layer, I have this component property button again. If I click on that, I'm adding a Boolean property. That means when I go into my instance, you'll be able to see that I have the ability to toggle slot number one on and off. And if I do turn it off, you will see that the instance swap property for slot number one also disappeared because Figma recognizes that it's not there anymore. So you can't swap it because it's not there. And this again is preference and personal choice. If you want to have a toggle switch and a Boolean property to switch those slots on and off from here, you can, but you could also just double tap in and delete them from the actual layers panel or the canvas. You may have noticed when we were looking at them before, but some of my components over here that are the elements that can build the card have component properties of their own. For example, this image component over here, it has a title and a description over it, but I've created a Boolean property and a text property for both the title and the description. So when you use this component, this is an instance of the image, you can turn the title or the description on and off and change the title from the design panel. When I'm using this inside of the card, in order to use those nested component properties, right now I have to double click or select from the layers panel that actual component in order to see them. But Figma gives us a way of exposing those nested component properties. If I go into my original card over here and then go into this plus button next to properties, I have the abilities to expose properties from nested instances. It will ask me which ones I want to expose. In my case, I do want to expose all of the slots. So I can just do that. Now, when I go into the instance, you can see that it's giving me those nested component properties from each slot and they will change. So right now, slot number one has a title inside of it. So I can change the title and I can remove the subtitle, for example. But if slot number one is now an image, then I will get the nested component properties for the image component. So it's dynamic. It just checks what it is accordingly. And these are collapsible because this can become very, very long. Have another example to show you how deeply you can actually nest these component properties. So try to follow along. Right here, I'm using an instance of my component two buttons. So the component is called 052 buttons and inside of it, I have button one and button two. But if we look in our layers panel, we can see that button one and button two are actually instances of another component altogether. So let's follow this kind of component lineage. If I select this instance and I click here to go to main component, I will go to this component over here. Inside of it, I have two other nested instances. If I click on button one, Let's go to where that lives. So this is a instance of the component X dot button. So I can go to that one. So over here, I can see that I have this button component and it's a component set. I've got three different variants to it. There's a primary, a secondary and a disabled. And this button itself has component properties of its own for the icon and for the label. So when I'm clicking on this component over here, which is 052 buttons, this one has nested instances as well. And if I zoom in one level down, I can see that these buttons are using an instance of this icon that's called heart. And I have an instance swap property over here to change between the different kind of icons that live over here. So that means that when I click on this card and I'm using this kind of two button component, if I scroll all the way down, you will see that button one is pulling all of those component properties from three levels down essentially into this button and I can instant swap to a different icon and I can even change the label from here. So I'm adjusting something that's essentially three levels deep inside from this top level. And that's how powerful component properties can be. Here's a little mock-up just to show you. I only use the cards that we created now together, turn some things on and off, and you can see how you can create a really dynamic design and something kind of really nice, but still a cohesive look by using these pseudo elements because they allow us to have a cohesive design environment where we can only use the however many elements I created before, but we do have that freedom of selecting what goes where, what order they come in and all of that. I hope you enjoyed. Please leave a comment below to let me know what other kind of videos you like to see. Have you ever used pseudo elements before? Give us your top tips below. Subscribe to my channel for more videos. See you at the next one.